What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Living in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today, a super important one for you. We're going to talk about some of the more common mistakes and errors that people make when they're moving from out of state here to Grand Junction. And frankly, some of the most common questions that we get from folks that are moving from out of state, probably like you here to Grand Junction, Colorado. And we're going to do it right after this. So stay tuned. What is going on, everyone? This is Robert Hayes, and along with my wife, Christy, we are the Hayes Home Group right here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Hey, if this is your very first time to this channel and you just wanna know everything about what it's like to work, live, play, eat, sleep here in Grand Junction, make sure you hit that subscribe, tap the bell over there. That way you're notified every single time we post a new video. We are literally getting calls every single day from folks looking to move out this way, and we absolutely love it. So if that's you or you have questions about moving out here to Grand Junction, reach out any way that you know how. That information popping up below. Give us a phone call, shoot us a text, send us an email, whatever you need to do. We've got your back days, nights, weekends when moving out here to Grand Junction. So like I said in the open, we get clients mainly from out of state that are looking to move out here to Grand Junction. And so when you're doing that, there's a competitive environment that you're in. Obviously, you're probably living in one right now where you're coming from. So it's really important to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row and lined up. And we put a strategy together that makes sure to make sure that you have the absolute most success when we're pulling the trigger and making that offer on the home here in Grand Junction. So the first thing, we don't really need to number them, but I'm going to anyway. The first first and most important thing that you need to understand is in this competitive environment that we're in, sellers are usually getting multiple offers, right? They're probably getting multiple offers on the house that you're selling, which is good for you. But when it comes to buying here in Grand Junction, that means you really don't want to have a contingent offer to the home that you're looking to buy here. In other words, if you put in an offer contingent on the sale of your home in Tallahassee, Florida, the seller here is gonna look at that offer and then six other offers, which probably don't have a contingent sale. So that just means that your offer kind of looks a little less attractive than some of the others on the table. So if there's any way that you could get into a situation where you're not on a contingent offer, meaning your home has to sell first for this offer here in Grand Junction to go through, then that's really the optimal situation that we want to be in. Now, not everyone can do that. And if you have to put in an offer here contingent on the sale of your home, we can do it and we've had success doing so. But we definitely want to make sure that we put some strategies together to make sure that that offer kind of rises to the top. Again, the optimal situation is to make sure that your home is sold and you're putting an offer in here without a contingency. Now, how do we do that? Now, what we're seeing on the ground, and we've have, we have a ton of experience doing this, is clients are either getting themselves a short-term Airbnb, which there are a ton here in Grand Junction or VRBO, for let's say 60 days. So their home in wherever USA is sold, then they'll go ahead and book an Airbnb here for 45 to 60 days. Generally, that gives us plenty of time to get Get the uh, you know the showings in order and find that perfect dream home that checks all the boxes and then still have that 30-day window left in that Airbnb to go ahead and wait for the closing here. Closing is typically 30, 35, sometimes 40 days. The other thing that you can do, and as a seller, where you're coming from, understand you have all the power right now. So you can certainly do what they call a post-closing option occupancy. So you're going to sell your home again at Omaha, Nebraska. You need to make sure that you let the buyer know that you're staying in that property for another 30 to 45 days after your property closes and you have the cash in hand. 
you're the seller in this competitive environment. So you can certainly ask for that. That's very common and customary. So that gives you that window to come here and put an offering on a property, do the showings, tour the neighborhoods, find that perfect fit based on the lifestyle for you and you, or you and your family and have plenty of time to put an offer without a contingent sale on the home that you're selling from wherever you're coming from. I hope that makes sense. So putting an offer without a contingent sale certainly puts you in the best position. Now, the other angle on that post-closing occupancy agreement is similar to what we just experienced with clients who had four days. They came out here from, I think it was Arizona. Great folks, they had four days here to look for that perfect home. It just didn't work out, but that's okay because now they can go back and they're still able to stay in the property that's already sold. Again, they have cash in hand. So now what they'd like us to do is just do video tours. They were able to, during that four day stretch to kind of hone in and target a specific area so they already know exactly the area that they want to be in so now we'll just do a google duo a skype a facetime of the actual house and once we find that perfect house they're go they're ready to go ahead and pull the trigger on a video tour and make an offer on the home doing it that way so i think we're batting a thousand 24 for 24 on doing video tours where the client didn't even see the home with their own eyeballs until closing so that works out really well. Um, if you can't be here and find the home in person, we can do video tours. We do them all the time. Okay, the second common error that we're seeing often is clients are coming out and they're really just throwing the net all throughout the entire valley. So we'll ask, okay, what areas have you kind of, you know, honed in on? Well, we like the north, the northeast, the south, the southwest, the southeast. We like Palisade, we like Fruta, we like it all. It just doesn't bode well in this competitive environment to have that wide swath of an area. So you really do want to kind of hone in on that specific area, again, based on your needs and your must haves and lifestyles. Let's face it, you're coming out here to Grand Junction for that certain lifestyle. So you don't want to be doing showings in Fruta and then going all the way out to Palisade and then coming back to the north, then out to Orchard Mesa. It just doesn't work work well in this competitive environment that we're in. You can start at 11 o'clock and the very first home that we show you might be the one, but you still have seven other showings all throughout the valley. And we're not done until six o'clock at night. Guess what? That one that we saw at 11 o'clock has already gone under contract. So you really want to narrow that search to target area, again, based on those two or maybe three absolute must-haves as far as area. Is it a school district? Is it close to shopping, restaurants, golf? Is it close to hiking trails? Uh, is it just a budget thing? So we're kind of just in a certain area based on a budgetary factor, uh, but definitely get that target circle as small as possible. So all we're now doing is looking for that perfect home. Okay, the third most common error that we're seeing, let's flip it around a little bit. People are making their search way too small. I wanna be on Maple Street, Robert. I love Maple Street. That's a great street. Looks like people are having a lot of fun there on Maple. Look, you might be waiting nine months for a home to come on the market on Maple Street. That's putting your search way too narrow. Again, it's an area that you want to focus on. I like the north area. We know between 24 and 28 road. If you haven't seen some of the maps we've shown, go back to some other videos. Uh, maybe my editor will throw up 24 and 28 road north of Patterson. In fact, I know he will. He's awesome. Maybe that's where we want to be. So now you've got kind of a four mile by five mile square that you're looking for that perfect home. That's fine because those homes are going to pop up on a more regular basis versus the home that you're looking for on Maple Street. A little too small. Okay, the fourth error that we find people make sometimes is not sticking to your must haves, your absolute check boxes, which again, usually when it comes to the home, there's two or three 
absolutes. There's non, no negotiating on it. And sometimes we find people are starting to waver on those because they're getting discouraged because it's been you know a day and a half until uh, more listings popped up on the MLS, the, the search that we have you set up on. What you don't wanna do is look at those super cool, pretty wide angle lens photos that are online because that's where you're gonna start your search, right? So initially you're thinking, I need a decent backyard. I need a three car garage and maybe I need that fourth bedroom. Okay, those are my three must haves. And then you look at that super cool, beautiful kitchen with the pendant lights and the granite countertops and it's got a two car garage. It's got no yard and there's only three bedrooms, but you still want to go take a look at it. Ultimately, we're just wasting time because you're going to get out to the property. Once you get beyond that shiny new kitchen, you're going to realize that's all there was to the photos that you were looking at. And then there's, again, no extra garage bay, no yard whatsoever, and we've just wasted a full hour. So make sure you stick to your must haves so that at the end of the day, you're going to be completely ecstatic with the home choice and the offer that we put in. Okay, last but not least, number five. Is it five? I think it's five. Are you sitting on the sidelines just because? Now there's plenty of reasons. Now we're talking to plenty of folks right now that fall of 2022, that's when they're gonna come out to Grand Junction because they're gonna retire in the fall of 2022 and they can't do anything until then, I get that. But if you're just waiting on the sidelines to hope that interest rates are gonna come back down a little bit or maybe you know with a month and a half of inventory or all of a sudden in two weeks gonna be at a six month of inventory, look, it's just not gonna happen. Year over year, we were at 24% appreciation. Now, rates certainly have crept up and that has caused a little bit of a pullback. When I say a little bit, I mean we're looking at probably 16 to 17% appreciation this year versus 23%. So if you're waiting just to wait, I always say it's never a good idea to try to time the market. Those folks back in the dot-com bu uh, bubble of 2000, remember that? Oh, we're not gonna buy right now. There's a bubble in this and that. Home prices went up 5%. So if you're ready to go and you can definitely qualify and everything's within your budget and there's nothing holding you back, then I would suggest get off the sidelines, get off the fence and pull the trigger while you can still get that appreciation because that same home for 600 grand in eight months is gonna be 650. It's just the way of the world right now with supply and demand issues that we're dealing with. So those are some of the common things, the common errors, the mistakes that we're seeing on the ground. And we wanted to put this out there to give you that advantage before we start the process on what it is that you need to look for. But as always, as much as we love making these videos, we'd love nothing more than to absolutely crush your real estate goals when you're moving out here to Grand Junction. So that information popping back up below, give us a phone call, shoot us a text, send us an email, even send that carrier pigeon, whatever you need to do, because we've got your back days, nights, weekends when moving out here to Grand Junction. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.